We are on problem number 10. Problem 10. If 2, 2x two minus 2 times 2 minus x is equal to 0, what are all possible values of x? If I multiply two numbers, right? I'm multiplying. If I multiply two expressions that are equal to zero, that means one or both of these expressions are going to be equal to zero. And if you, uh, you know, if you've solved for roots of of a quadratic using factoring, you'll be familiar with this notion. So either two x minus two is zero, and or actually either of these could be equal to zero, or both of them could be equal to zero. So if 2x minus, let's just solve this. So add 2 to both sides. 2x is equal to 2. x is equal to 1. And here, if we just add x to both sides, we get 2 is equal to x, or x is equal to 2. So x could be 1, or x could be 2. So choice D, 1 and 2 only. And you could try them out, right? If x is 1, this becomes 0 times 1, which is, of course, 0. If x is 2, this becomes 2, right? 2 times 2 minus 2 is 2, times 0, which is 0. And 0 doesn't work. Right? That might have been your temptation. But if you put 0 in here, you get minus 2, because this, this term will go away. You get minus 2 times 2, which is minus 4. So that doesn't work. You just have to set each of these expressions to 0. Next question, problem 11. 11. If x to the third is equal to y to the ninth. What is x in terms of y? So what we can do here is we just want to get rid of this cubed power. So how do we get rid of the cubed power? Well, we can take the cube root of both sides. If that doesn't make sense to you, I'll show you how. x to the third, let me give, it, give this some breathing room, is equal to y to the ninth. I'm just writing the same thing a little bit bigger. What we do to one side of the equation, we can do to the other side of the equation. If I want this exponent to be 1, I just have to take it to the 1 third power. How do I know that? Well, if I, take, if I take something to an exponent and then take it to another exponent, I essentially just multiply the two exponents. right? That's an exponent rule. And you can review that in the exponent videos. If you, if you multiply 3 and 1 third, you get 1. So that's why I'm, I'm raising it to the 1 third power. And that, of course, is the same thing as taking the cube root. <coughs> Excuse me. I just had some chicken. I need some drink some water or something. But of course, if I do something to one side of the equation, I have to do it to both sides of this equation. Right? If I raise if I take the cube root of one side for the equation to hold, I have to take the cube root of the other side. So x to the third to the one third, well that's just x to the first, or just x, right? Because three times one third is x is one. So x to the first is just x. And that equals what? y to the 9 times 1 third. Well, what's 9 times? 9 times 1 third is equal to 9 divided by 3, which is equal to 3. So x is equal to y to the third power. That's just this 3. And that is choice. That is choice C. Next problem. I will switch colors for variety. And there's something that I have to draw. Okay, so they they drew. Let's see if I can pull this one off. Let's see if I can pull this drawing this figure off. So it looks like a line like that. Got a line like that. Got a line like that. And then I have has it's like almost a mirror image a line like that. A line like that. Close enough. And they're asking us, they're asking us, in the xy coordinate system above, which of the following line segments has a slope of negative 1? So what is a slope of negative 1? A slope of negative 1 means that as we move to the, as we move to the right one, as we move to the right one, we move down 1. That's a slope of negative 1. And if you're you know, familiar with uh, slopes a lot, just intuitively, you know that it looks something like this. Slope of negative 1 looks something like that. And if we look at the lines that they, they drew, all the choices, the ones that are moving up are definitely not our answer. right? This one is moving up, so this one can't be the answer. 
This one is moving up, so this can't be the answer. This one's moving up, so this one can't be the answer. So all of these lines, the, the yellow ones that I haven't scratched out, all of these have negative slopes. And we just have to figure out, well, which one could be negative 1? If we look at, if we look at you know, this, this slope here between point O and point A, they mark off that this is you know, 1, 2, 3, and this is 1. So for choice, for this line, we went over 1, right? We moved over 1, but we went down 3. So this line has a slope of negative 3. Negative 3. And similarly, they draw, this goes out 1, 2, 3. This line, we have to go, we have to go 3 for it to go, we have to move in the x direction, positive 3, for it to move down 1. So this has a slope of 1 third. And you can kind of tell that it, it goes down very gradually. right? The rise, actually negative 1 third, sorry. The rise is negative 1. And the run is 3. Run is just how far you move in the x direction, right? This is the rise is negative 1, which is right there, negative 1. And the run is 3. So just so we know that this isn't the answer. So just by deducting, by deductive reasoning, we know that this is probably going to be our answer. And it also looks like it has a slope negative 1. And if you were to actually look at it, points D and C, this is points D and C, this is a about this is like this looks like the point if I just look at it by inspection one comma three and this looks like the point three comma one right here three comma one so what is the change in y over the change in x well the change in y is three minus one so that equals two and the change in x is one minus three which is minus two which is minus 1. Remember, when you calculate slope, you always have to use the first. If I use 3 the first time in the numerator, I have to use 1 the first time in the denominator. So 3 minus 1 over 1 minus 3 is the slope, and it's minus 1. But if you're really good, you should just be able to look at it and say, well, that's the closest thing to negative 1, because it's not too steep and not too shallow. Next problem. Oh, and so that is choice D, C, E. Choice E. Problem 13. Problem 13. Kyle's lock combination consists of three two-digit numbers. The combination satisfies the, con the three conditions below. One number, one number is odd. One number is odd. One is one number is a multiple of five. And then one month is the day of the month of Kyle's birthday. So one number, day of month. So what do we know about that number? Well, it has to be, it's a two-digit number, so it has to be between 0, 1, and 31, right? In order for it to be a birthday, it can't be. OK, if each number satisfies exactly one of the conditions, which of the following could be the combination to the lock? So each so one number can't satisfy two of these conditions, and then you have you know, another number that satisfies none. Each of them has to do one of them. So let's look at the choices. Choice A. Choice A is 14, 20, 13. So let's see. If, let's see, which one could satisfy the odd? Well, this number is odd. So let me see. If this condition is satisfied by this number, it's odd. One number is a multiple of five. So let's say, so this condition, well, that's satisfied by this number. And one number is a day of the month. Well, this looks pretty straight forward. One number is a straight day of the month. One number is a day of the month. Well, 14 could be a day of a month. And in general, in any SAT problem, and I'm, I'm seeing this pattern more and more as I go through all of these uh, practice tests, is when they, they have a problem where they want you to go through every choice. Your, the answers tend to be one of the first few choices, because they don't want to make you to waste a lot of time. So you should feel pretty comfortable if you did this and you got choice A. And if you, know, if you want to see an example of what won't work, I'm guessing B won't work. Choice B says 14, 14, 14, 25, 13. 
Huh, actually, that does look like it could satisfy. If each number satisfies exactly one of the conditions, which of the following could be the combination to the lock? Oh, exactly. So why can't this one be? Because this this condition that one number is odd, it can only be satisfied by one of the choices. Oh, I'm running over. I'll see you in the next video.